How old are those skates? They're chirping me because of my skates. I mean, they're not. I... They're classics. They're what? They're old school. Swedish. Swedish, no finish. You missed the net. My mom, she's played hockey for, she probably doesn't want me to tell you this, but probably like 40 years, I'd say. Some of my earliest memories are at the ice rink, watching her play and me and my three brothers running around the rink. You know, growing up every year you had a dad scrimmage against the team and I always thought it was just so cool that my mom was out there playing and that was kind of some of our experiences we got to be on the ice together. I've been playing for 43 years. I started playing, I think when I was seven and a half, eight. So I've played in a few different leagues over the years. I do play competitively with a team from New Jersey and we go to nationals. It was tough raising the three of them, getting them everywhere. I really relied on my parents with getting three different boys to three different ice arenas at three different times. And I've always worked two or three jobs, but you just do what you gotta do. Obviously it isn't easy raising three kids on your own and the sacrifices she had to give. Missing her Friday, Saturday nights, bringing my brother's places. That's something I just I always remember. <laughs> wow. You lifted that one. Pop, pop. Growing up at the ice rink a lot, obviously with my brother. My grandparents helped out tremendously, helping out my mom with especially how active me and my brother's uh, hockey schedule was. If uh, one of us needed to be somewhere, obviously only my mom could take us, so my grandparents stepped up. My grandparents are retired, so luckily they get to come to every game. Those are little things I cherish. I was always go green type of guy. I like the blue collar that Michigan State brings. I kind of always resonated with that. My first college hockey game I ever been to was actually here at Mon. I was watching my older brother play when he was on Ohio State and just watching that atmosphere, I kind of just fell in love with it. Being on a hockey team is something that you can't replicate anywhere else. Just being here at Michigan State, I've built lifelong memories and lifelong friends that I'm gonna remember forever that are gonna be in my wedding, are gonna hopefully be at my funeral. Just the camaraderie we have. Hockey brings you that bond and that's something that I don't think you can replicate anywhere else. The beauty thing about hockey is there's so many different ways to play it and players have different styles and I definitely have a little bit of edge to my game. York is bulldozed out of the ice by Jagger Joshua. It's awesome to have Jagger as a teammate. I think Jagger's intensity helps us a lot because he's at his best when he's like talking and hitting guys and everything. And I think that's a really important key to our team, you know, that we have that X factor in our team. So it's a, it's a big part of our team. Jagger can set a tone for a game, and I, I remember we had a certain game on, on Saturday night, and Jagger in his first two shifts had you know three or four big hits and got in on the four check and created a couple scoring chances. And Talking to the guys after that, they said after we watched Jagger's first two shifts, we knew we were going to win the hockey game. That's impactful. He's big and he's strong. His puck pursuit is really good, and when you're influencing guys and when they see your energy and they feed off that, that that's a special thing, and, and Jagger has that. I definitely think my, my physical and aggressive play style brings energy to the team. Just me going out and finishing my checks or doing the little things gets the guys going. My mom, I definitely think she has a little edge to her too, but I think, I don't know, she's a little soft to me. So I don't know if she is as aggressive as me, but she definitely has a little more skill and she can skate. So I give her that. I love Jagger's style of play. He's aggressive, but he's so defensive-minded too. I love watching him forecheck and that reach, and he's just reading the ice. People always ask that, like if I fight or like do, no, not with these teeth and nails, no, I do not. I score goals, so he's got his thing, I have mine. Okay, that was, that was I, good. I, you're supposed to sell you there. What? Oh, it's... Oh. <laughs> oh, no.
with my older brother, us both playing hockey at a high level, and hockey's definitely strengthened our bond together. My brother is someone I can have daily conversations with about life and just hockey, and he took a similar path and everything that I'm going through currently, he's been through. That's a tremendous help in getting me through it, I guess, and it is always nice I got somebody to talk to. I watch his dreams like, become reality. Now look at they're gonna go here. A little scrap going on here by the youngster, Dakota Joshua, his first scrap in the NHL. I remember one of his first couple games I was I went to my grandparents' house watching with my grandparents, him on TV, and it kinda put in perspective about how far he's came and just where I wanna be, I guess, and that's a little extra motivation I get to have every day. One day hopefully I can uh, make it next to him. I think Jagger looks up to Dakota. Deep down there, best buds always there for each other, and whether they show it at home or not, they're really proud of each other. I think they have a great relationship. One of the biggest things I think hockey's taught me is discipline. You know, just having that work ethic to get better each and every day, even if it's a small fraction. And that's even something I can bring to my everyday life and just trying to become a better person each and every day. It's been a long journey from sitting at my games in the stands to now playing D1 college hockey. I'm proud, but I'm also proud of his grades. He grew up to be a good man. He's a really good kid, and I'm super proud of him. I sometimes even get a little blurry vision about how far I've really come. Two kids that got raised by a single mom and a low-income household in Dearborn, Michigan, probably don't have the best odds to play Division One sport. I know after every game, I, I get to come up and see my grandparents and my mom, and they always have a smile on their face. It's just the little things, I guess, that make you realize how uh, grateful you are. All right, hit me, hit me, hit me! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you like <All> that? Right. <laughs> yeah. This is Front Street. This kind of runs along the lake. In the UP, there's not that many hospitals that have cancer centers. And Marquette, brand new hospital, has it. And the Beacon House is for people that come and can't afford to stay in a hotel. So it's come in, sleep there, eat there, and pay whatever you can. Mariucci's sister worked for a doctor, Legali, who, who I think started the Beacon House. It just became a passion of his. And, we just donated some money for one room, but Steve put all the grease work and, <laughs> and the fundraising and uh, realizing it was a real big deal for him and his family. And I'm just happy I got a chance to come here and it looks beautiful. It's unbelievable. Do you have a best friend? I have a best friend. Izzo, don't you have a basketball team to coach? What? <laughs> Tom and, and, uh, and Lupe flew up just to be with us today, well, yesterday too, and we kind of grew up together. I've grown up, he hasn't grown up yet. <laughs> we would run through the wall for each other. We support each other and <sighs> we've got all the stories from way back when, all right? But I can't tell you how happy I am to have you. I mentioned that Izzo's been at Michigan State for 37 years and I've been like everywhere. And so when I left, the football coaches gave me a going away party. Buck Nystrom, Herb, Branke, Driscoll, right, Billy Rademacher. He said, don't forget where you came from. That's where I'm from. I'm a youper. You're a youper. And youpers take care of youpers. And we take care of anybody who visits the UP too. There's a lot of things I always want people to whether it's my family or my teams that we've talked to, you know, support your church, support your community, support your school, your high school, your university, whatever that is. If you can, you should. Well, I'm a youper. And so supporting youpers, even though we may not know them, but they're people that are just like us. I needed the Beacon House when my mom was sick. So I get it. On behalf of my family, 
the board, the people that have been involved with this, 100 miles an hour. This is our Christmas present. Merry Christmas, everybody. Buck for Michigan State. Once again, Lewandowski forward to Tucker on the left wing with some speed. Drops it back now yes. to Davidson. Near side. Goal for Michigan State. Great puck movement for the Spartans. Make it a fistful. Analytics are important because they tell a big part of the story of a hockey game. A lot of different things, good, bad, in between. It's becoming a really, really important aspect of sports. Since I've gotten here, that's kind of been my task, is making sure that the things that I'm focusing on, things that are happening at the professional level, are things that we can replicate here at the collegiate level. We started our actuarial sciences program about 10 years ago, roughly. And so within our actuarial program, we designed this course called Math 491B. And that's a course where we incorporate teamwork as well as data analysis and mesh them together to, at the end of the semester, have a deliverable, have a presentation. Around 2011, I met the co-founder of this program, Trevor Nill. Pro levels, the Spartans work in. Nill with a turnaround. He scores! Trevor Nill has tied it at one. We would talk about hockey analytics all the time. You know, around 2015 or so, I said, let's start a program in hockey analytics. Let's give them data in hockey and see if there'd be an interest, and there was. The reality is all professional sports teams are either already doing it or in pursuit of doing analytics. And so for to equip these students right now, the student athletes right now, to go and be prepared for that next level is a huge benefit. One of our students actually was working with MSU Hockey, connected us, and of course Trevor Nill is a former MSU Hockey player and NHL draft pick. So those connections were sort of there, but they really got broadened when Brad Behan connected us with Dan Sturges. We get set up upstairs in the press box overlooking, and we have two stationed at each game. One does in-game face-off recordings and analytics. Another typically works on the shot plotting and shot recordings during the game as they send us that information. Through the final horn sounds, we go back downstairs, typically end up finishing the shot plotting, which takes about another hour or two, and then putting all that stuff in our final game reports that we let Dan make his final changes to, so that's prepped for the coaches to be on their desk tomorrow morning. At the end of the day, no matter what data you have, no matter what really interesting tools you possess, you want to synthesize all of that into a report that somebody can understand. Coaches, hockey managers, they're inundated with data, and so for us the idea is to streamline that data flow within the game, but also post-game to give them an idea of what happened in that game, process it, digest it, and move on to the next one. It's a tool that it's not going to tell us everything, but I think that what it does do is it uncovers some subtle aspects of the matchup in particular. But I think what Coach Cole has set up here is we're using it in a way that is just beneficial. Whether it's college, youth, pro, it's little things like that that could mean the difference between winning a shift, winning a game, winning a series. It can be really, really impactful over time, and that's what our approach has been. We wanted to come up with a formula that was gonna be immediately impactful, but also, in long-term fashion, gonna be something that was gonna be able to build on itself. Minus R of sigma Y. And so if you look at X and Y as being a player, I think working with MSU Hockey in this collaborative fashion is unique. Some interdisciplinary work happens here often. And everything that I do here at the university, it's students first. Anything we can do to benefit the students. You know, my role has been to kind of collect the talent and kind of ask questions of them, but the talent speaks for itself. It's giving me hands-on experience. I'm getting to interact with coaches and with professors and with individuals whose skill sets are greater than mine. It really like, brings me into the deep end, but I'm able to see you know, what's going on? What does this field actually look like? This experience will be crucial for a career. Whether or not you're looking to work in sports analytics myself, if you're just trying to be in the realm of sports, you have to understand where all this data is coming from, how to interpret it, and how to utilize it. Just like you'd want your manager of sales to work on the sales floor to see what it's like, you gotta be able to be in sports and understand the use and value of analytics in today's game.
It's just a dream come true. It's cliche, but there's no better way to describe it. It's just an amazing feeling to be able to do something like this and have this kind of opportunity. The impact's immeasurable. There's two key factors here. One, Coach Cole, Dan Sturges, and the rest of the coaching staff being open and willing to engage with students not only gives non-athletes another opportunity to get in, it's great exposure for the program, great exposure for the university, a lot of hands-on experience. So, you know, huge credit to those guys for seeing the opportunity and taking it. And a lot of these students, they can now put on their resume, they're ready for the next level. So not only student athletes are, but also these students. This Michigan State team that hardly anybody was talking about. We think we know so much all summer long, don't we? We read those preview magazines, <laughs> right. we go to media days, we think we know so much. Just goes to show you how much things can change in a year. I just felt like the conclusion of last year, he had a lot more to prove and you know, our guys stuck with the process and worked their butts off and you know, nobody expected us to have the season that we had and you know, we end up winning 10 games and I'm very proud of our guys for that. Ready to work. It was the first real off season we had under our strength and conditioning staff. Really got to understand the X's and O's better and we all developed better relationships with the new guys and with our coaches. I feel like we all just felt more comfortable this year. I think it means a lot to everybody in the locker room, especially the seniors and the guys that this is their last year. Knowing that we left Michigan State in a better place, I think Coach Tuck has this program going in the right direction. Michigan State and the Spartans have a, a lot to look forward to. Look at what he did last year. They're only a two-win team. And, and over the course of the past offseason, the spring and all that, the freshman class he recruited, the transfer portal, the way he was able to completely change the outlook of this team, it's remarkable. I remember the first team meeting. He had came in. We were sitting there, didn't really know what to expect. And he basically said he wanted to take over the Big Ten. Right there, he kind of set the tone, like he's not really playing around. It's kind of almost like an NFL style around here. Like if you're not bringing anything to the table, you're not gonna be on the team. That's what it takes to be a great program and try to play with the best. And Mel Tucker will have a 10-win season in his second year as head coach. That is the fastest any MSU coach has won 10 games in his career. Please welcome Big Ten Coach of the Year. Mel Tucker! I wasn't surprised that Coach won Big Ten Coach of the Year. I expect him to win that every year. He's, he's a hell of a coach. He's a hell of a mentor. He's a hell of a leader. And it just shows the amount of work he puts in. I wasn't surprised. He's more than deserving of that award with what he's done with this program from year one to year two. You know, I'm very happy that I was part of that story. You know, I hope that I left the program in a better place for him in the future. The Big Ten Coach of the Year award to me is really a team award. It's a staff award, a player award. It's an organizational award because obviously <laughs> I'm not a one man show. It's an honor. There are a lot of great coaches in this conference, a lot of experience, guys that have won a lot of games. But for us to get that honor, to me, is, is a reflection of our entire organization. Goes to his right, throws it over the right shoulder, Speedy Naylor. Jalen Naylor with a grab inside the five. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. On behalf of Michigan State, University and Spartan Athletics, we couldn't be more excited to accept the invitation to play in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Playing in a New Year's Six Bowl game is a great reward for a team that's had an outstanding season. I think it's a tribute to Coach Tucker and his staff and the players. They have never allowed preseason expectations to define them. They never became complacent and they played every single down hard. I can't think of a better example of a culture of excellence we're building in Spartan Athletics. He's into the end zone! Touchdown, MSU! We've experienced great support from our fans all season, both at home and on the road. I can't wait for this community to rally one more time together to support our football student athletes. What excites me personally is, you know, it's back home. Uh, I live 25 minutes outside of Atlanta. I grew up, born and raised in Georgia. I'm playing my parents' alma mater and my whole family's from Pitt. And um, it's my last game as a Michigan State Spartan. I just want to go out with a win in hometown state. Well, I get excited for most of the dudes that don't usually travel to away games. We're all there. So I look at it as like a little mini spring ball. 
Uh, we're going to have an opportunity to develop some players, get guys more reps, continue on with that with that process of helping our players reach their full potential. The question is, you know, what do you want and what are you willing to do to get it? And so we're willing to put the work in in preparation for this game. We have an exciting football team. We have a lot of good players. The guys play extremely hard. You know what you're going to get from our guys every time that they step on the field. They're going to be physical. They're going to play hard. They're going to play with mental and physical toughness. And they're going to play for four quarters. And so I believe that's a team that you can get behind. I expect our fans to travel. I know that they will. And I know that they'll be loud. And they'll be proud. Not just in the stadium, actually. Every TV set, you know, every sports bar, every every watch party, Spartans are gonna be out in full effect.